Well, well, I know it's been a while since you've heard from me. Um, seven tornadoes touching down in your town with the uh, requisite destruction afterwards and then contractors in your house and then all the other stuff that, yeah, it'll, it'll do that to you. So I've been absent for a while, but we're back. And of course, I couldn't have my first podcast in a while be kind of lame. So I have an extra special guest from across the pond, as they say. So welcome to the Rebel Tribe podcast, where empowerment meets attitude. And this gal's got plenty of attitude, let me tell you. Sass meets savvy. We are not just another podcast. We are your virtual tribe of fierce females ready to conquer the world. So join us today as we meet Penelope Whiteley, creator of Aging Disgracefully. Penelope, how are you? I'm well, Melody Ann. How are you? I am so good. I'm so good. I'm glad we were able to pull this off because what is it, like a 15-hour time difference between us? <laughs> yeah, it, yes, it's 15 hours. So I think we've got it right because for me, this is roughly 10 o'clock in the morning. For you, it's 7 o'clock roughly in the evening and they're very civilized times, aren't they? Yes, that's always been the problem with a lot of my guests that I want to get to internationally. It's like, okay, we got to make this work somehow. <laughs> Without me getting up at four in the morning or you being up at four in the morning. So Yes. Yes. I don't find four in the morning works. It doesn't for me. I'm barely coherent. I don't get civilized until about noon. <laughs> Sound, sounds about right. Well, let's get right to it. First things first. What is the secret to aging disgracefully? I'm asking for a friend and myself. <laughs> I don't know that there is any specific secret. I think there are several things that you have to be aware of. And there are several things that I believe you actually have to do if you don't already do them. And the first thing, of course, is loving yourself. If you don't love yourself, then your confidence level, your ability to give people sass, your ability to have an attitude that is your attitude and nobody else's and a touch of irreverence and I think you need to bring in all those things that children have you think of a child of five or six they don't care about anybody really they just do their own thing they dress the way they want to they speak the way they want to they say what they want to say unless they have terribly strict parents um and I think that's the way we have to be after certainly after 55 and maybe onwards so I think when we hit 100 we need to be that wonderful childlike delightful human being who doesn't really care about anything else except living a life and having an attitude that helps other people do the same. Well, that was one of the things that first attracted me to you. It was You were posting a picture of some shoes. And I was looking at those shoes going, I couldn't wear those at 20. There's no way I could wear them at 60. <laughs> so that was one of the things that I first noticed is that you just seem to challenge the conventional notions of aging. So did you have like a, a eureka moment that, that kind of sparked this whole this whole journey? No, um, I have to be honest, my mother is responsible. My mother, the expression aging disgracefully was my mother's. And um, when I was a little girl, I'd say to her, oh, you know, Miss Strudwick, for example, wears so-and-so and my mother, and she tells me she's aging gracefully. My mother says, yes, well, I'd rather wear these shoes and age disgracefully. <laughs> so that's where the expression comes from. And I think, again, it's about owning yourself. It's about being able to say, I don't want to wear those that type of shoe. I don't want to wear those thick Lyle stockings and have my hair in a tight bun and not say what I think. Because I think part of the problem with our age is we do become invisible. People will say, oh, no, I'm not invisible. And <laughs> I'm sorry, you are. Um, and we have to make sure we're not invisible. We have to be positive and out there and say what we want to say and 
empower those girls coming up behind us as much as anything so that they can really step into their visibleness, their visibility, if you like. We actually had a podcast not too long ago where I had several ladies on and we actually had that conversation about the fact that, first of all, as women, we have to fight to be seen. And as older women, we really have to be fight to be seen and be heard. And we all were telling our stories. Has there ever been a time when you actually had to like put someone in their place for uh, some age shaming? Spell it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> And one of the things I've learned about it is that um, if you do it in such a way that it's irreverent, but it's funny. So I always bring humor into these conversations because most people don't like to be put down seriously. And for me, non-aggression is always better. And I liberally lace everything with a huge dose of charm. And I try to be as pleasant as I can when I'm putting someone down. So it comes back to, I use sarcasm a lot and irony and, and sometimes they don't even understand it, especially if they're a man. Sorry, not beating men, but a lot of men don't understand sarcasm and irony. So yeah, do it, but do it nicely is my, um, motto <laughs> <laughs> okay well i'm going to pick your brains for some secret now so i i, I need to know that in, in a world that seems obsessed with youth anymore how do you stay so unapologetic about aging i mean i see it in everything you post and you see so many other women get on there and they're like talking about how old they are and you you're not you're like uh yeah I'm old and you know I'm old and here I am <laughs> how do you stay so yeah well you know I I don't really know I just am I refuse everyone says oh well age is just a number and yes age is just a number um there are some numbers you wish you never hit but age is just a number and Again, it comes back to attitude. If you're willing to say, my age has nothing to do with me or my life around me, which it doesn't, your age only affects you if you let it. So it's one of those things when people say, oh, you know, my parents are responsible for the way I am. No, they're not. You're responsible. Everything about you is your responsibility. And once you accept that, and I've worked with a lot of women who found that particular part of the aging process very hard, but then younger people find it hard. Nobody will accept responsibility for the way they are. And they have to because no one else has done it. So, so how do you handle that inevitable, you're too old for that comment? I know I've heard them at the most recently from my own grandson first when I told him I was getting on TikTok and I was politely informed that you're too old for that grandma and then when I told him I was starting a podcast I got the same thing you're too old for that grandma so how do you handle those those you're too old for that comments that we all get um well I'm probably going to upset you with my answer but I just ignore them <laughs> truly Oh, you're too old for that. Oh, really? <laughs> tell me when I've done it. Then you can tell me I'm too old for it. No, nope, because but... you do. You look at them. You look. At, sorry, you look at people who say that. And you think, yeah. So what have you done? And what are you doing now? You're walking around whinging about the fact that you have arthritis and and you don't know what to wear and your feet hurt and oh, my husband's got the. I mean, seriously, get over it. Build a bridge. Get over it. Well, it doesn't upset this me at all. Well, it's got nothing to do with anyone else. If you want to do a podcast or go on TikTok, that's your business, not theirs. And they don't have to watch if they don't want to. Good, because that's exactly what I did. It was like, yeah, watch this. <laughs> go, go for it. <laughs> Here we are recording the podcast and yeah, I've been on TikTok for a while, so we're all good. 
well, we're doing well in, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you decide to try and turn this whole attitude into an actual business? Um, I've, I've always been um, interested in style and fashion and design and anything even remotely artistic. So through the, through the years, and there have been many, um, I've always been involved in it. And one of the things I found was that there was, actually there are several things. One of them was I used to speak a lot at different events, which I don't do so much now, which is a shame because I love it. Um, but uh, people would come up to me afterwards and say, and I, I have a course I run about writing books and they come up to me and say, oh, I really want to write a book and I want to tell people this, that and the other. And I just look at them and say, well, write the damn thing. I no one's stopping you. And the same with style. People would say to me, oh, well, you know, I have big hits. Well, you can wear this, this and this to get round that problem. I, run, I used to run a course called Lose 10 Pounds in 10 Minutes, which, of course, is nothing to do with weight. It's about the way you dress. And you can, if you dress in a specific way and say you have a big belly, which a lot of us do have at a certain age, um, you can disguise it so you don't look as if you have it. And I think to um, style, attitude, all of that, if you present yourself in such a way that you can't be ignored, and I don't mean by wearing ridiculous clothing that would only suit your 18-year-old granddaughter or makeup that should have been thrown out 50 years ago, or a hairstyle, more importantly, that belongs on a woman half your age and not you. Um, if you can get past that then and get over that and not do it, then you, you reach back into your visibility again because people, for some reason, and I'm not advocating dressing like an old person, I'm advocating... Take, ooh, I can't even say that word anymore. Um, I, I'm saying dress as though you mean it. You're a mature woman of whatever age and you're not going to take any of this rubbish lying down. So aging disgracefully came naturally. And if you talk about aging disgracefully all the time, your attitude changes. So that wasn't hard, that part. So what's what's some advice then? Because so many women I notice are are afraid, I think, of of embracing their age. I mean, I will proudly tell anybody who asks, yeah, I'm 67 and I'm pretty proud of it because a lot of women don't get that far in a lot. I mean, if you look at some other countries, a lot of women don't get yeah. that far. And, you know, there's many women out there that have not. I'm not saying that I don't have my fair share of aches and pains and whatever, but for being 67, I get a lot around a lot better than a lot of women my age and younger. So, you know, I'm I'm not afraid to tell people how old I am, but I've noticed a lot of women are. And, and if you watch the commercials anymore, it's all about creams and potions and lotions and this and that to, to look younger what do you tell people who are so afraid of, you know, their first wrinkle? Oh, my God, I've got my first wrinkle or my first gray hair. I'm old. What do you tell these people? I think, again, it comes down to attitude because there is no cream or potion or whatever that is going to turn back the clock. Your age is your age. I'm 75. I'm 76 in September. Oh, do no. I care? No, not really. Am I happy to tell people? Yes, because it doesn't make any difference. But I think when people get on the um, the merry-go-round of worrying about the first wrinkle and their crow's feet and they're losing their life because it's a waste of time and it's a waste of effort and it sure as hell is a waste of money to try and do something about wrinkles and crow's feet and, and saggy this, that and the other. No, I'm not saying I don't believe in things like plastic surgery. I do. Uh, I'm happy to have that done, you know, just to have it all lifted out of the way. But I think aging is about, um, and the way you look is about sagging rather than wrinkles. Your wrinkles are your badge of honor. They show you've lived a life. 
if you have laughter lines and and uh, again they show you've had a happy life and you've laughed a lot and and people love you when you laugh they don't love you when you're sulking and miserable and etc <laughs> It's called, please leave the building. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think, again, wrinkles are a sign that you've lived a life and you just want to make sure you've got the right wrinkles. Okay. I'll have to go check. Do I have the right wrinkles? I don't know. <laughs> I have a few, so hey. <laughs> oh, darling, I'm covered in them. I've even got them on my ankles. So... <laughs> Now I need to go look. Do I have wrinkly ankles? <laughs> Actually, it's funny. The one thing that most women worry about more than anything, uh, this is in my experience, is gray hair. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, they get terribly upset when they get gray hair. The reason we go gray, is, well, I'm not good, going to talk about the scientific reasons or anything, but the reason we go gray in actual fact, I believe, is because it softens our face rather than having something dark around our face, which highlights the bad bits. Uh, gray hair softens the overall appearance of your face. And the trick, I think, is to find a cut or a style or, or, or a color. You may want foils or silver foils or whatever um, that adds to the softness and then it's important to look at your makeup because you can't wear the same makeup you've got to tone it down use different shades etc and that's important so the bright blue eyeshadow is out is that what you're saying <laughs> i want to say yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure bright blue eyes shadow worked when you were 20 to be honest however <laughs> oh it was hot when I was 20 I remember because I had this makeup kit that I used to get this this makeup box every month and then one of the things they sent me was this bright blue shiny eyeshadow <laughs> okay <laughs> so apparently it was in back in those days back in the 70s it was cool and I don't think and, I and it works well on young faces but yeah, <laughs> and I know what you mean about the hair. I was I colored my hair for the longest time until finally it just got to be annoying more than anything. It got to be a pain in the in the hind parts to drive to the salon, sit there for an hour and a half, two hours, while she messed with my hair. And then it's like, and then to do that like every six weeks, I finally was like, I'm not doing this anymore. This is annoying. I'm giving up a good three hours of my day just so I can not have gray hair. It's not worth it. <laughs> so I yeah. stopped. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah, you have to, I think. You have to decide what's right for you. And nobody who writes in a magazine or, or has a YouTube uh, channel or whatever knows what's right for you. They will give you generalizations. You know, when I'm talking to people about style, I give generalizations. There's nothing specific unless I'm working with them. In oh, no pussy cat. <laughs> we have the cat. How did you get in here, Mac? Get off. The... Like I said, this is my podcast. If it can go wrong, it shall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, and, and we've got a little white tip on our tail. Yes, we do. Oh, this, how sweet. This is Mackie cat. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Gorgeous. So him Sorry. A... Yes. Oh, you want to be on? So this is, don't step on the keyboard. Okay, come here. Okay, come here. Uh, uh, all right, time to get down. We found a it. stack of pallets when we were out. We heard this little meowing and he was just a baby. So I, I was oh. a little kitten and I, I called him and he wouldn't come. So then we just kept walking. And the next thing I know, I looked behind me and he was following us. And I was like, oh. We were, we were oh. in the parking lot because oh. we were walking on a trail and I was like, I'm going to get run over. So I stayed there with him. I made my husband run over to the store and get some cat food. I said, go get a can of cat food. <laughs> okay. I said, because he's going to get his little butt run over. So he went and got a can of cat food and we coaxed him close enough to us to grab him. It's so lucky we didn't get clawed to death because we weren't sure if he was wild or not, but he was so tiny. So he was probably okay. So we grabbed oh. him and took him home and I guess somebody, he either got lost or somebody threw him out because we brought him home and just yeah. set up the house and he was instantly like, I'm, I'm good. 
he just moved right in. Yeah. None of that wild yeah. little cat stuff. So no, I I find it strange that the things people do to animals, I really do, and I hate it. I get very upset by the things people do to animals, truly. They do it to humans, it doesn't worry me so much. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know that feeling. Yes, I know. I have I have a house full of rescues because I live at the end of a dirt road and it's a, it's a drop off point. So I have a house full of of rescues right now. I have, including Mac, three rescue kitties and two rescue puppies. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, oh I like. Oh, there, I can see him behind you. Yeah, that's where he normally sits. I don't know why he decided to get down and walk around. <laughs> Normally, he'll just sit up there and be quiet. And it's like children, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, yes. Now that we've digressed a lot, okay, <laughs> which also happens a lot on my uh, my podcasts, so that's okay. People, like I said, people are used to me. It's okay. And if they're not, you know what? Scroll on by, okay? <laughs> Don't click in to listen. Oh, I attitude. I like it. <laughs> So, oh, where was I? Where were we? I lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. So we were talking about laughing. So yes, what what is okay? What what is your favorite way to to laugh? I guess in, in the face of all these traditional aging expectations, because we all hear them. I hear it all the time. It's like you know, you're the the usual. You're too old for that, or you can't. You know, you shouldn't wear that. And you look, it's too young for you, or whatever. You know, what's what's your favorite way? Mine is to just tell them to whatever, take a hike. <laughs> okay. I just laugh at them. Hmm. I just laugh at them because some of the things they come out with and, and I look at people, especially young men, and I say, would you like to say that in English? And they say, huh? I said, well, do you speak English? Because all I've just heard is a load of rubbish. So speak to me in my own language or shut up. <laughs> so what is the most get very offended. What, what what is the most outrageous thing you've ever done to to challenge the stereotypes of aging? I, I don't know. I don't know, because most of what I do is outrageous by most people's standards. That's why, um, because I know you've done something, because I know, I've, just from watching you, I know, okay? <laughs> I, I I think it's my use of the word no, um, and people will say something to me. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is, an actual fact, and I say no, and they look at me expectantly for however long it takes, and I mean, yeah, we can stand there for quite a while in complete silence while, with them looking at me, waiting for me to say, to give them an excuse as to why I've said no. And I don't give them one. And they, and finally they say, well, do you just mean no? Yes, no is a complete sentence. That's it. That pertains to so and many. And it really horrifies them. Oh, that pertains to so many things. No is, no is a complete sentence. I need to put that on the t-shirt so people can understand it. No yes. is a complete sentence. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but if you think about it, it is. But if you look at, at people generally, uh, from teensy children to very old people, nobody ever says no without an excuse to go with it. You know, you're right. Think no. about it. Got it. Nobody ever just says no. They always have to give a reason. Yes. God, even I do it. Now that I'm thinking, yes. about, I'm thinking of all the times just like in the last few days that I've said no to something and it was immediately followed by no, because whatever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm guilty. I, okay. <laughs> oh goodness. Slap yourself immediately. <laughs> it's um I I I think in, in some ways, um that is saying no is is more responsible for my change of attitude because I used to be a people pleaser for many years I was a people pleaser until I finally realized that nobody appreciated it <laughs> they just accepted it as their due and I thought one day well no it's not your due <laughs> I 
don't have to do this if I don't want to and it doesn't suit me. And once you reach that realization that you really don't, you can say no with no excuse and you don't have to do what people expect of you, then I think you're well on the path, if not having reached the point of having the right attitude for a woman who will never see 55 again and who to all intents and purposes to a large part of the world's population has become invisible how dare they decide you're invisible who the hell do they think they are i mean seriously that that yes that is the biggest thing i think that we all struggle is is the fact yeah. that you hit a certain age it's like you have suddenly just disappeared no one yes. hears you no one listens to you that's one of the reasons I started this podcast was to give a voice to the women that don't yes. have one <laughs> because yes we do all have things to say and some of us have very we do say and they're, they're wise things and they're sensible things and they help people and teach people I remember my first real experience I must have been I think I was early 60s, and I walked into a coffee shop, funnily enough, here in Melbourne, in Australia. Um, and I walked into a coffee shop, and it was lunchtime, and there were about seven or eight people in front of me, all young-ish, young-ish people, you know, maybe early 30s or something. And they ordered their coffee and got whatever it was they wanted food-wise, and they left. But I'm still standing there. <laughs> looked at the guy behind the counter and I said, excuse me, is there a hole in the ozone or have you recognized that I'm actually a human being standing here waiting to be served? And he said, oh, sorry, we've been a bit busy. I said, yes, I noticed that, but that doesn't mean that I should not have been served. I was the first person before the hordes came in and I still haven't got, oh, well, what did you want? I said, Okay, so, so I gave him a huge order of things I wanted. And he put them all on the counter and said, that's so much. I said, yes, but I'm not paying it now because you've given me such appalling service. And he said, oh. So there was a bit of a confrontation. <laughs> and I won. What a surprise. <laughs> and I left the show and I thought, well, that's it. That is, act obviously, I'm at an age now well, I'm really old. Nobody recognizes I exist. I'm just a hole in the ozone. And I was so angry, I can't tell you. <laughs> I said some things to him I shouldn't have said, which were of a personal nature. Um, but I thought, no, no, I'm, I'm over this. Already I'm over it. I've got another 25 years to go. <laughs> How do you stay? So I don't know. I don't. What? I said, how do you stay so bold and daring when it's like when they're trying to put you in a box? Sometimes I feel like they're just trying to put me in this neat little box. How do you stay so so bold and brave and you know? I don't so know. I, if I, I, I would have looked at him and said, "I'm not paying for it now." Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. Well, I, I think you have to take a stand somewhere um but i i don't i don't know how do i how do i i just i have to be honest with you um i look after myself i really do i eat well um my big problem is sleep i don't sleep very well doesn't matter what i do but i've never slept very well and eight hour our sleep, which is what we all need and should have, is something, I can't remember the last time I had eight hours sleep. Um, but what I've learned is I take a rest in the middle of the day. And people say, oh, you shouldn't do that. And I say, well, I do, because it gets me through and it keeps me performing at the level I want to perform. Mm -hmm. So I look after myself. I sleep, get what sleep I can at night. And if I can't sleep, then I'll I'll... I don't know, play games on my laptop or read a book or whatever. And then at some stage during the day, and it could be 11 o'clock in the morning or it could be 6 o'clock in the evening, I become so tired 
that I just put my head down and I'm gone. And sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes it's two hours. It depends on how tired, but eat well, sleep well, and laugh, just laugh. At you know, there's a, a society, the yoga, the yoga laughter club, I think it's called. And it's American, funnily enough. And the idea is you go in for a session and all you do is stand there and laugh. You're not laughing at anything. You're just laughing. And it's hysterical. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen because people are just laughing because our brain doesn't know what we're laughing at. We just have to laugh for our brain to pick up on the humor and the fact that we're laughing. And I found that so interesting. So my one of my big things is smile. Always smile. And when you smile, a lot happens. The energy around you is raised. You go to a, a store and the checkout chick is, um, it's probably an expression I shouldn't use, but I just did. Um, <laughs> I kind of like checkout chick. <laughs> It's very sour and miserable and this, that, and the other. And, and I will, I tend to look at them and say, oh, did your cat just die? And they say, no. Oh, well, smile. And then, mm, I say, oh, come on, smile. And they'll give me a smile. I say, see, you are now beautiful. You're a beautiful person when you smile and not when you don't. So I get people everywhere to smile. I chatter to people all the time. It doesn't matter where I am, but my aim is to get a laugh or a smile. And I always do, because one thing, and I don't know if this is, I, no, I would, it's not an age thing. I've always been the same. I'm very open. I just talk to people and I don't mind what they say and they don't mind what I say, but I'm very open. And people like that. It makes them feel comfortable. It makes them feel able to laugh at the stupid things you may come out with. And it works. And again, for me, it's about raising the energy level of everybody around me. Sweet. So if you could give your younger self one piece of advice about aging, what would it be? Get over it. Seriously, because there's nothing you can do about it other than die. And that, to me, is not a viable option. Well, down that if one. you don't grow old, yeah, well, if you don't grow old, what do you do? Put yourself in a box somewhere. And as a woman, you're often put in a box anyway because people, people think, don't see you, you're invisible. So, no, I don't see any alternative. And as a, as a, as a young person, I never worried about aging, did you? Nope. In fact, I like, I don't even worry about it now. Every day I wake up and I'm like, some days it just hits me. It's like, oh crap, you're old. <laughs> and other days I don't think about it at all. I just go on about my day and it's like, well, something will happen. It's, it's, mind. it's like, oh yeah, I'm 67. It's, it's so funny because um must be a couple of weeks ago now. Oh no, maybe more than a couple of weeks. I can't remember. It doesn't make any difference. But I woke up one morning and and I was thinking, a friend of mine just had a birthday and I thought, oh, isn't that sweet? You know, blah, blah, blah. And I woke up one morning and I thought, oh, my God, my next really big birthday is 80. And I thought, how did I get to be this old? <laughs> because I suddenly realized, yes, 80 is old. And in reality, I don't think 80 is old. 80 is as old as you want 80 to be. Well, my mother-in-law is 88 and still chugging along. So, hey, <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Yeah. I tell her she's going to outlive me. <laughs> she's going to outlive all of us. <laughs> it's, a, it's interesting how some people live so much longer than others. I, I look around me now and so many of my, my friends that I went to school with and to university with and they're dead. And I think, what? what's wrong with them? It's very strange. It really is. 
Yeah, she's she's finally at the point where she will she will now let me actually if we go over there for dinner or anything, she will now permit me to load up the dishwasher for her because it's hard for her to do that. You know, for the longest time, I was not permitted to do anything in her kitchen other than eat whatever she put on the table in front of us. But now now we get to help clean up because it's hard for her. It's like, well, I had to wait for 88 to hit before I was actually allowed to do anything in your kitchen. That's awesome. <laughs> great isn't it really if you think about it i it mean is. she has a great attitude she does I, I love her i love her it took us a while to get there but now i love her <laughs> and, uh, she's not invisible as well so what's next for aging disgracefully any any projects that need to be that we should all be excited about i know you've been talking um, about a podcast of your own yes Yes, um, it's about to start the podcast. I'm at today. I'm recording the first episode, which is just me um, talking about what it is. It's called "It's Never Too Late," um, and it's aimed at our women because um, it is never too late. If you decide you want to start a business, we'll do it now. Oh, I'm too old. No, you're not. Just do it. So there is a book called "Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway." And it was written by a lady called Susan Jeffers, and it's been around for quite a while now. And I found it again the other day, and I thought, it's so, so redolent for people our age. Feel the fear and do it anyway. You've been there, you've done that. Most of your life has been spent living within the expectations of others. Isn't it now time to live your life? So... Uh, that's It's Never Too Late. I've got a few books that um, are being reworked at the moment. One of them is called Hot Stuff. And I've divided it into um, five different books because I wrote it several years ago and it was called Hot Stuff, The Ultimate Guide to Style for Women of a Certain Age. And I wrote it in 2008 and everything in there is actually still uh, spot on, really. Um uh, but I'm so there'll be a book on on um, accessories and shoes and that sort of thing and and a book on this that and the other uh, and then I've got books I've got a book called Menopause which surprisingly is about menopause <laughs> and I've got things like five steps to beat menopause and and um, diet and and of course my big thing is travel so um, I'm my my actually my new website is live today or tomorrow. I don't know which day, but uh, really my, my aim is by next year, I'll be back into it. And the idea is to take between eight and 10 women um, from wherever in the world and have them come to Tuscany and stay at a villa. And it, it'll be a choice. You can either have 10 days in Tuscany, in which we do everything, um, including shopping, of course course uh or five days in Florence and then travel down to Positano and have five days on the Amalfi coast or longer if you want to I've discovered I can't go back into Italy and live there anymore because I have a British passport <laughs> and after Brexit nobody can get in there if they have a British passport but I found um a way to do it and I'm thinking, you know, if I'm there for three months and people want to come and I will give um, help on. So so it'll be an all it can be a question and answer stay. I can help them with their style. I can help them with their attitude and their mindfulness and, you know, all that sort of thing. So Italy, Italy is my goal. I don't really care about any more. Oh, the south of France is very nice as well. Because of course I've been to fifty-seven countries, so Tuscany's I know where is best. So what's that? I said Tuscany's on my list, so keep me posted. I have not been there yet, but it's on my list of places I've been. Oh, to you know, I, I, I have to say very quickly. I will be very quick. Um, Italy. I just love Italy and Tuscany. I, uh, well, I, there's nothing I can say really. It's perfection in every way. Really is. Well, good. Let me know. Keep me posted. <laughs> okay. 
I've been wanting, like I said, it is, it's on my bucket list of places to go. Um, what, what else is on your bucket list? Of places to go? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Santorini and Icaria in Greece. Oh, lovely. And other than that, uh, I would like to go to Czechoslovakia. Well, I'd have to figure out where, well, now that Czechoslovakia isn't Czechoslovakia, I would have to figure out where my family came from originally. My my father's family came from Czechoslovakia. Um, but now that it's all split up, I don't know exactly where. So I would have to figure that out. But I would like to go and see where he was raised, where he was born and raised. Um if I can even find it, <laughs> if it even exists anymore, who knows? It was just a little tiny town called Medegeshka. So if anybody's listening to this and knows where Medegeshka, Czechoslovakia was and still is, let me know because I would like to visit. Um, it's, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm trying to think a few years ago now. Um, Luther said, oh, we're going on a bike ride. Uh, would you like to drive the support truck? Oh, yes, I said. And we left London and um, we went to Paris. And then from Paris, we went down through um, Italy and blah, 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 and Czechoslovakia and Bratislava and the, all these places that didn't exist however many years ago. And do you know, it was absolutely wonderful because we were able to stop and see people and talk to people. And, and that was, the, the boys were all riding bikes and I was driving the truck, so I had a good time. <laughs> but something like that is well worth doing, truly, just, you know, driving through slowly. And then you'll find the town you're looking for, probably. There we go. <laughs> that was always, that was kind of something I had. I, I had heard, I have some friends that live over there um, in, in Europe, they kind of travel around. And that was kind of one of the things I'd always wanted to do. It's like, let's just get to Europe and then we can just like bus or train or yes. ride or whatever, because it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like here driving from the East coast to the West coast over there. You just get to go wherever. And yeah, it's it, it, over there. It's countries. And then in, in the States, it's, um, States. <laughs> so it's always kind of intriguing. Absolutely. I would like to just come and like spend about six months just traveling around and seeing everything. <laughs> Make it 12 months. Oh. You would need 12 months. I could do 12 months. I could do 12 yeah. months. Don't forget, you, you've got to go to Scandinavia as well. You can't miss Scandinavia. I have considered moving. I've already told my, my grandson says, when you, when you flee the country, grandma, take me with you. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Hopefully it won't get that bad. <laughs> they said, looking, look, as an outsider looking in, it may. So where would you move to? I don't know. I've been looking. I, seriously, I, ser I have been seriously looking. And um, Portugal is on my list. Um, parts of Italy are on my list. I'm not exactly sure. Tuscany has Tuscany was on my list to be honest so um Panama not Europe I've I've been looking at Panama but yeah I've been Panama yeah I have a cousin who lives in Panama I've been I've been checking around <laughs> seeing where all the other crazy Americans that have fled the country have moved to <laughs> but, but you know France is um, always lovely. I have a cousin who lives in a place, oh, near Béziers, which is in the south of France, and it's lovely. It's re and very peaceful and calm. And because I don't know about you, I find everything very aggressive nowadays. Yes, that's what I want. I want peaceful and calm. Like I said, I'm I'm moving to that South Sea island that my friend's grandfather is the chief of, and that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> It's not, it's, it's not Samoa, is it? No, it's not Samoa. It's some little rinky dink. I, I don't I actually don't remember what he told me it's called, but it's just some little South Sea Island something. And and yeah, it's I mean it's probably part of some bigger chain, I'm sure. But still, I don't care. There's no he says like there's very limited internet and there's no like no, you know, you don't get the you don't get the morning news 
I used to be a news. Oh, shame. <laughs> I know. I used to be a news junkie, and now it's like I don't even want to know. I don't even turn it on anymore. It's like I don't want to know. If the world is ending, I'll know soon enough. And other than that, I don't want to know. Okay, <laughs> just <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> You'll know if the world is ending because the sky will change. <laughs> so probably. Okay, so I saw your. Okay, so we got the podcast, and I saw it was tea parties. Did you do some kind of like a tea party or something? Oh, and yes, I did a VIP days, um, and I still do VIP days, uh, but they're more private now. So it's individual invitations to people to join me for a VIP day, and really, it's just a afternoon tea in some terribly expensive but very gorgeous place uh, because people like afternoon tea especially if the, the cakes and the sandwiches and the tea come with some nice champagne it just works really I love afternoon tea see so because my my father came from Czechoslovakia and my grandmother was was through and through she didn't speak a word of English but my mother's family her father came from England somewhere too, and afternoon tea was a thing. I yeah. love my tea. I do love my tea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and tea is very important. Can't survive without tea. No. But Americans drink it black and weak. Sometimes. You do. You, Sometimes. You, well, it's, I also every cup of tea I've Every cup of tea I've ever had in the United States has been weak and black. And they say, would you like cream? And they put cream in it. It's just gross. <laughs> Seriously. And, and sometimes in hotels where they give you tea, and I look at them and I say, I never teach you how to make a proper cup of tea. <laughs> they get very upset. I can't help that. <laughs> I, I do get some looks sometimes when I put a little cream in my tea. People kind of look at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny because in, in England we have what, what we call builder's tea, which isn't a type of tea. It's the way you make it. So it's very strong with just a dash of milk. And we call it builder's tea because it's the way builders drink their tea. Very strong tea with just a dash of milk. But this idea of, I know a lot of people who drink black tea, but it's normally quite weak because black tea can really upset your stomach and your gut. Did you know that? I did not because I drink mine strong. I put mine, I will put the tea bag in there and it'll sit in there for a good five, 10 minutes while I'm off doing something. I'll for completely forgot that I was making tea. And it's like, oh my gosh, my tea, <laughs> I'll come back. And it's, like, and it's like, oh yeah, okay, tea. And but that's Put how some you milk in it. So much tannin is not good for you. I, I didn't you know the tannin in the tea. Well, tannin. sorry that because that's usually what happens. <laughs> so it hasn't it hasn't killed me yet. So I guess I'm okay. You're you're strong, made of Czechoslovakian stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had that, had that uh, what is it, 23 and me or whatever. It is. Anyway, we had it done. And it, yeah, that's I'm, I'm Czech and, and British and Scottish. And 2% Portuguese, which I would love to know. Or no, two, it was 2% Greek. I'm sorry, 2% Greek. And I'm trying to figure out where the 2% Greek came from, because I don't know anybody in my family who's Greek at all. So I'm trying to figure Probably out way back. Trying to figure out where that two percent Greek came from. But it was very interesting. It was exactly what I expected based on, you know, what I knew of my family. It's like no surprises there except for the two percent Greek. <laughs> yeah, actually I was reading yesterday and I can't remember what I was reading now. Something about uh Oh, somebody just bought out Ancestry.com. I forget who it is. And uh, there was a huge article about, oh, well, you know, now they own your DNA results and blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, I'm sure that's not possible. Um, and somebody wrote a very sensible article saying, no, the only person that owns your DNA is you. And um, 
this company that bought out Ancestry.com. Well, I wish I could remember who it was. Anyway, <laughs> do you find your memories going? I forget things. They come to me later, but I do forget things. A little bit, a little bit. And we're allowed. We're allowed. We have, it's because, as I've explained to so many people, it's not because we're forgetful. It's because we've just got so much stuff in our heads now yes. after 67 yes. years of, of accumulating all of this stuff that sometimes it's mm -hmm. hard to find it as quickly as we should. We got to hunt for it a little bit, but we always find it in the end. You know, might take us a day or two, but always. we'll do Always find it in the end. Just occasionally I will worry and I think, well, that's pointless, isn't it? <laughs> Worrying <laughs> is pointless. <laughs> well, this has been fun. It really has. I'm so besides the, the books and the podcast and the and the tea parties and anything else. And the travel. The travel. I'm really the, the travel. The travel is called Blossom. Blossom Beyond Borders. Um, and the reason it's all that is because most of the women that come with me will blossom into themselves. Um, it's not just beyond where they are. It, it's, it's beyond the borders of their life rather than the border of where they live. So it's blossom beyond borders. In other words, get out of yourself and go find the real you, because you are there waiting to be discovered. So that's your Facebook group that I just joined. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yes. All righty. Well, I'm going to put a link to that in the, in the description then, because if anybody wants to come to Tuscany with me when I go. <laughs> or even with me when I go. <laughs> I'm open. I'm open to a travel companion. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to put that link in there. So y'all can so you can all get in touch with with Penelope, and just in case you want to come to Tuscany with us when we go, it's a limited group. I heard her I'll say. Keep you posted. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. Oh, pack your bag, ready, just in case. <laughs> Don't tempt me. I might. I might have that bag in my closet ready to go. <laughs> I do like to. And don't worry about clothing. You can buy some there. I've done that before too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My husband and I are are known for our little impromptu road trips, and we'll we will often start out on just a drive, and then it's be like, oh, we're too tired to drive home. Let's spend the night. Well, I don't have anything to wear in the morning. Let's go shopping. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, I love it. That would not be unusual. And we do love the so travel. You do realize. You do realize that you are, um, you and Del, you are aging disgracefully, don't you? Because you're doing what you want when you want. That's that's the plan. <laughs> so you are definitely aging disgracefully. And that's really what it's all about. It's just being you. I always told my kids I was going to live to be 120 and I was going to be, I can't think of her name. She was on a TV show. Mm. I can't think of her name now. It was a character on a TV show, and she was she was quite the quite the hot thing, even at her age. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'll be like, don't yeah. My my husband, my, I have a friend who does couple boudoir photos. She does boudoir cup photos for couples, and I keep telling my kids, I said, like, I'm gonna get your dad. We're gonna go have our boudoir photos taken together, so that when you're oh, cleaning out my house after we're gone, you can be looking at it and go, Oh my God, mother, really? <laughs> it's, 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 actually, it's interesting. A couple of really dear friends of mine who are in their sixties. Um, both have boyfriends who are 12, 15 years younger than them. And they have such great relationships. I'm thinking, oh, well, yeah, that's probably okay, really. And I think for them, it keeps them young as well. Hmm. Why not? I like it. Well, why not, as you say? It's good. Anyway. <laughs> been lovely talking to you. I appreciate <laughs> this. This is fun. So 
if you would like to connect with Miss Penelope about any of her stuff, I will put the link to the Facebook group, the, the Blossoms Beyond Borders, because I just joined it and I'm already loving it. Um, I can't wait for the travel part to start up. And from there, you can find all the rest of her stuff. I know this actually went fairly well, fairly well. We had a fairly few, well. Yes. We had a few little glitches. We had a cat walking across, but you know, it's okay. This is how oh, the cat was okay. <laughs> And there was a couple little glitches here and there, but for the very first one after such an absence, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. So if you were well all done, if you were all good with it, like, comment, share, you know, do all the stuff because we are trying to grow this channel. We want this channel to be a place where women can have a voice because as you yes. heard her say, we don't. We're invisible. We're put in boxes a lot of the, especially as we get older and this is your place to, to have a voice. So like, comment, share, do all this stuff because we're trying to grow the channel. And Miss Penelope, Absolutely. thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had a lovely time. Have a good night and I shall see you on the internet, I'm sure. Oh, you will, definitely. Take care.